Today I'm going to show you why the Subaru BRZ absolutely dominated the manufacturer's showdown at the Gran Turismo World Series. We saw it in the hands of Killian and Daniel Solis. It destroyed the field. It was quite a heavy tyre wear race, a bit of fuel as well, but mainly tyre wear over 90 minutes. And this car is just so OP in those conditions. Now what they don't tell you, what Tom Brooks and Jimmy and whoever won't tell you, is why this car is so OP. And I'm going to show you in this video. There's two things really, but the second one is very, very, very unique to this car. And the first thing I want to do is, I want to get the tyre wear down in this car. So I want to simulate how this car uh, handles when it's already had the degradation on the tyres. So that means I'm going to do some donuts. Let's do some donuts. Right, I've just done some donuts. You can see the tyre wear is um, on the rear tyres and the indicator bottom left is just above the icon for the rear tyres there. So we're going to do a comparison with this car and another car in group three. So what we'll do is now, we'll do an outlap, I'll tell you how this car handles, and then we'll see, when we do the flying lap and compare it, just how much of a difference there is. So in Group 3, all of the cars are rear-wheel drive. Some of them are MR, some of them are FR, some of them have the engine in, in the front, some of them have them just in front of the engine behind. Um, so you don't have to worry about front-wheel drive cars or four-wheel drive cars in Group 3. So it tends to be the rear wheels that, the rear tyres that get most of a beating. And the first thing to say about the Subaru BRZ is that it already has very good tyre wear anyway. Like it looks after the tyres anyway, so they wear less in the Subaru. We've seen this before with the Mazda RX Vision GT3. When that came in, that was a very good car on tyres, also good on fuel sometimes when they made it too heavy. Um, and the BRZ is in that class as well. So when there was a daily race C here at Suzuka, actually the first week when they introduced the BRZ to the game, the BRZ was massively OP then because it could actually no-stop this race where other Group 3 cars would just have to stop and that meant they couldn't really compete. But the second thing about the BRZ is the way that it handles on worn tyres and this is a bit that's very different, even very different to the Mazda. So a lot of Group 3 cars, when they have worn tyres on the rears, will tend to understeer a lot. So you think about a corner like Spoon coming up, they'll just tend to really, really, really understeer. It's very hard to get the car to turn in without sliding on the tyres, which will exacerbate the tyre wear. And you just sort of understeer around these corners. The BRZ tends towards oversteering when it has worn tyres. Now that can catch you out, but in what is quite generally an understeery game, Gran Turismo 7, same as Gran Turismo Sport, you usually want as much oversteer as you can get because then you can just work with it and you can use it to get the car rotated. So we're gonna see here the BRZ a little bit deep there. The BRZ here on these worn tyres is still going to turn in all these corners. So have a look how we're handling that. We're going to do one fast lap here in the official time trial and then we'll compare it against probably the AMG which we saw uh, Baptiste Bedouard, Lucas Benelli absolutely hounding the Subaru but couldn't get it done because the Subaru just, I think has so much in its pocket because of the tyre wear. So we're coming through the first sector here at Suzuka. You can see there that's where we get understeer in a regular GT3 car, but not in the Subaru. Again here, it's astonishing really. Even now, I was getting oversteer, so it would have been able to control that just to, and oversteer here as well. Absolutely phenomenal. The front end of the car just really wants to pitch in. It's really extraordinary to be fair. Again here, oversteer. I'm struggling to control it, but that's exactly what we want because we can get the car pitched in and then we can just lay down the power and straighten up. You don't want to be understeering where you're just spending an age trying to get the car turned in. So we've got a lot of wear here on the tyres now. A lot of wear, woo, a lot of wear. Because we're running eight times tyre wear in this session. But compare this to how the other, probably the AMG, we'll do the AMG, how the AMG is going to handle when it's got the tyre wear in this situation because these are very worn soft tyres now. Very, very, very worn soft tyres. Coming into Spoon. Again, get the car pitched in. It's a very satisfying sensation to know that the rotation is there and you've almost got to control yourself from not overdoing it because then the back end will come round and you'll start sliding. So 1.30 RTO to go and then the final chicane. Let's see how we do before we're going to jump into the AMG. But this is a car I wouldn't mind driving in a higher tyre wear race at all. In fact, it's the car where I choose in a higher tyre wear race. This could be tricky. Keep it in second here. Cut that one as much as we can. 
and it's going to be the run to the line on our flying lap even though the tire wears more have a look where the tire is and it's going to be a 201 201.4 right let's jump into the amg and start with the same amount of tire wear and let's have a look at the difference it's going to be quite dramatic let's do it right so here we go back out on track we're in the corvette actually which is a car that the subaru had to overtake to get the win we got the same amount of tire wear and i'm really not looking forward to this uh, <laughs> i'm really not looking forward to it we've got to do the out lap and then we've got to do the flying lap and already i can just tell that this is going to be so much more di i mean the bz wasn't easy to control but you could kind of work with it I'm just really not looking forward to this at all and this is what the drivers have to contend with in the world tour when they were doing 14 laps on the soft tyre because of the minimum laps required in each tyre and it wouldn't work strat wise to split that and do it on a, on a two stop so you can see already the car's kind of understeering I'm not getting that front to pitch round like I could in the BRZ now, this isn't the lap we, we're going to look at because we need to compare the time on the next lap. But it's going to be a 201.4, two if I remember, for the next lap to see. And I'm just trying to induce the front end to come round gently, but it's difficult. And I feel like when I do it, the whole thing might come round. Whereas the BRZ, just at the point of entry to the corner, just wants to peek its nose around. See, this is where we'll get oversteer there. But it's not as, it's not peaking to the apex like the BRZ. If you've driven these cars, you'll understand. The BRZ just gets you to the apex facing where you want to go quicker than the Corvette. So the Corvette, you have to muscle it. You can see here, I'm just, it feels on more understeery than the BRZ. And the next lap is really going to be the interesting lap because the tyre wear is going to go through the floor. So, yeah, I didn't envy people like whoever was driving the Corvette, but even for the um, AMG boys, I mean, that is not the best car on tyres. So, I think they did a superb job, but there's a reason why I'm driving for Subaru. Right here. Not the most auspicious start, but here we go then. In the Corvette for the flying lap, 201.4 to be and I'm gonna to have to really concentrate here and this is gonna be a lot harder to control than the BRZ a lot harder I'm driving it better though. Lift there. 2A1.4 to B. Stopwatch won't lie. I'm driving this to the absolute best of my ability. Big moment. Probably take off two seconds there for the mistake. even take off three seconds and see where we end up because I think just generally this car is a lot more difficult to try and muscle around the corners because you don't want to go overboard with the rotation because then you'll just lose the whole thing very quickly I feel like I'm working against the car now I mean that right rear as well it is chewing up that's in a very bad state going to be fun. Nice. That'll do. Break earlier here. We had a moment here in the BRZ, if I remember. It'd be easy. Wow. Well, even if you take three, four seconds, I mean, that is five seconds slower. Five seconds slower in the Chevrolet. And I felt like I was actually driving better than in the BRZ. Um, 
So that the BRZ is just a phenomenal car when it comes to tyre wear right now. If you see a race and you can drive the BRZ when there's tyre wear, I'd recommend it because compared to a lot of Group 3 cars like the Chevrolet, it is absolutely night and day. So there we go. That's why the BRZ was so OP at the manufacturer showdown. And we'll have to see whether they adjust it, whether they nerf it. But otherwise, if it comes up with that thing in the game to decide who you're going to click to think to win to get those credits, I can, I can recommend Subaru. But there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you. See you next time.